Uh, Kim, hi. Um, Diana here. Got Nigel sitting next to me. We're in Bass in Cambridge. Hi, Kim. Hi. <laughs> so, Nigel's with us in spirit, that's for sure. He's actually on holiday, otherwise he'd be dining in on Skype. And one of the questions that you asked me to ask Nigel, I don't know what's going to come out, is what is it like working with an artist? I think it's absolutely amazing um, working with artists because it puts a completely different uh, perspective or, or spin on, on the kind of science that, that I do here at Bass. And um, over the years I've worked on many projects and um, I've always endeavoured to try and bring out the best uh, in, in the data. So almost um, using data as art, if you like, as part of kind of my everyday work. But actually working with artists actually takes it up to another level and allows us to do things that I've only ever dreamt about in the past, like combining images with sounds and music with sounds. And um, it's just fantastic to see it come together. I know when I first met Nigel, which was in 2006, he was already interested in art. And then obviously he's very open to actually different interpretations of um, space and art. And it's taken us beyond Antarctica. It was, just, um, it was just a natural evolution. We kind of started off, I remember when Diana first came to Bass, I was thinking about what we might share. And I was thinking about the sounds of space from Halley in particular, but also um, the fantastic images that are available these days, both of the aurora and also of um, coronal mass ejections. There's, there's fantastic images of, of solar mm -hmm. activity um, from, from various satellites. And uh, combining this with, uh, with the sounds of space was our starting point, really, wasn't it? And then we moved on. Um, from working with this data to thinking about what other sounds there might be out there, and that was that was quite fascinating. I always knew that some of the sounds of some of the sounds of space that we have collected from uh, the Antarctic, um, there are similar sounds um, on other planets, uh, most notably the gas giants. So that was a natural stepping stone, and then it was just a case of looking around to see if there were any other uh, sources of good sounds that, that we could find from beyond the solar system and, and we, um, we found pulsars which we use as, as beats um, because they spin at different rates and they sound a bit like, um, a bit like beats and um, then more recently there was the, the gravitational waves and these were only first discovered a few years ago so you know, if we'd have been collaborating five years ago we wouldn't have had these sounds so these are very new sounds and kind of add to the collection, really, and, and, and give, um, give the artists some additional material to, to work with. I think for me, uh, when I first heard the sounds, the data as audio, and it was a sort of sense of mystery. I got an emotional uh, response just with the, the sounds themselves. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in Australia. But obviously that's a new um, version, putting sounds of space outside a building in a winter sky. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. I've seen the, um, <laughs> the images that you've put together that uh, kind of um, give us an idea of what it's going to look like. And I think um, hopefully um, you should all be in for a, a major treat there. Okay, can I just clarify, are you going to have sounds accompanying? Well, I, I did ask. It's all new, so I, apparently I'm being offered a, a crack projection team and, there's, and the building looks as if it can take three projections. I'm not sure if Kim is going to get live music to go with this, the speakers. I, I'm sure this, there must be speakers. I don't know. Um, that's all to work out. So I think I'd love to have it with sound. To me, that's how it should be. Every time we go to a new location, there is an evolution that takes place. We are just about to embark tomorrow to take this to a festival, uh, which is called the Blue Dot Festival. So yeah, hopefully it's all <laughs> yes. going to work. You, know, you never can tell when you plug in your PowerPoint um, what's going to work and what's not going to work, because everywhere we've been, <laughs> there's always been issues. And so we're ready, and we hope that we'll be able to put on a, a good show for them. Yeah, but we definitely need the sound.
Yeah, I'd like to say something. I think yeah. we're kind of really excited by the Space Acoustic Ecology Project mm -hmm. that we're uh, about to embark on with Kim because that's very exciting. Kim's music is beautiful and magical and combining it with the sounds from Halley just seem amazing. It just makes the, it brings the sounds and the piano mu music together in novel ways and um, also selecting the sounds from particular times of day. You can create moods as well and, and this you then know when you're listening to the music that for example late night jazz and the, the, the sounds of space that you hear in the background you know, were taken late at night at Halley and so mm. you can associate that, you can sit back, you can listen to the music, you hear the space sounds and you know well actually if I was at Halley I might be hearing these sounds like at this particular time of day. Mm. I think it kind of adds a a diurnal aspect to the music that you know we don't often hear. So thanks, Kim. That's great. Again, that you've said that so beautifully as well. That whole idea of taking data and giving it a context, a narrative. Mm. That's a perfect fit. No, Kim. It'd be lovely to see you over here, and it'd be great if. Nigel can come over to Australia if you can <laughs> at some point. Who knows uh, what will happen? But I think our collaboration is not definitely not going to disappear. No, we're very much looking forward to to the next step. So you know, which is going to include obviously, hopefully, including Halley as an artist with the Australian National University Press. That's very exciting. Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, working with the, the 90 Minutes of Aurora Musicalist to make sure that um, we get the best from the, the Antarctic sounds um, that we can. I mean, Kim's music is there, it's beautiful, and we need to make sure that we um, have the music with the, with the best recordings that we, that we have from, from Halley. And I think we've got off to an, an amazing start, and we may be able to um, improve on the, on the sounds that we use in some of the, the soundtracks. Well, that would be great. The next rendition of Sounds of Space is in a performance space. It would be interesting to see how Becky and, and, and maybe another dancer kind of take it forward um, into the future. And we've got a nice performance space. And the, the last time when we did it here at Bass, we did it in a lecture theatre, which was fantastic for the lecture, but not necessarily the best space for, for art. But now we're actually going to um, a venue that, that, that should be able to cater very nicely for the for the dancers and the, and the art. Nigel, wish you were coming with us, but we'll see. I know you've got lots of holidays on, but if we can, definitely we'll Skype you. It's going to be a little period of a, a few days where I'm back at home, and so I should, I'll be in Skype contact then, and it'd be great to see what progress you've made over yeah. the two weeks, and then where, where you, you plan to go for the, the remainder of your visit, which hopefully will be amazing and a great opportunity to take some of the projects forward and I especially look forward to seeing the projections. Bye! <laughs> Bye Kim!